The author of the book, Robert Kiyosaki, says that he has two dads. One, his own biological dad, and second, his best friend's dad. Robert's own dad was a PhD and was teaching at university. His second dad, from whom Robert learned how to become rich, didn't even finish high school and learned everything in practice by himself. At the beginning, both of his dads earned enough money, but when they died, one died as a richest man in Hawaii and left millions of dollars to his family. And the second one left debt and unpaid taxes to his family. Kiyosaki says earning money is a science, which is not taught to us in schools. Schools teach us how to become an employee and build a career. And because of that, the majority of parents teach similar things to their children and direct them to the same direction, which is becoming an employee. If you are coming from a middle-class family, then there is a high probability that your parents taught you how to become poor. And this is not because your parents don't love you or don't want you to be successful. It is simply because they themselves are not educated about this topic. They consumed expired information, and when you were born, they passed the same expired information to you. Poverty is almost like genetics. It passes on from one generation to another. My parents always advised me to study very hard, get a diploma, and find a steady job. However, when I started to read books like this one, I realized that I learned more from a few of these books compared to my entire university years. If you are also coming from a middle-class family and have not read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, then I strongly recommend you to read it. I wish somebody recommended it to me when I was 14 to 15 years old. So many things could have been positively different in my life if I had read it earlier in my life. In this video, I'm going to talk about the seven main ideas from the book. The first idea is about the importance of financial education and understanding the difference between an asset and a liability. Understanding this difference is the most important step for becoming rich. Simply put, assets are something that puts money into your pocket and a liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. For example, if you have a car and you rent it out and earn money every month, then it is an asset. But if you have a car and it takes money from your pocket every month for repairs, maintenance, etc., then it is a liability. Examples of assets can be rental properties, company stocks, precious metals, etc. And liabilities are your home that you live in, phone, the car you drive, etc. Rich people focus on increasing their assets while poor people buy liabilities and focus on their income. Poor people buy iPhone telephones. Rich people buy Apple stock, which is an asset and increases in value over time. But the telephone loses its value the moment you take it out of the store. Growing assets are like planting a tree. You need to take care of it for years until its roots are deep enough to provide shade and bear fruits for your enjoyment. Unfortunately, many people want to get rich quickly without learning about money. That's like building a skyscraper with little or no foundation. And that's why you see people who earn tons of money, but after a few years, they lose all of it. The second idea is this. Rich don't work for money. Their money works for them. At a very young age, Robert had his first business partner, his schoolmate, Mike. They worked for the rich dad who taught them lessons on how to make money. The first rule they learned was that the rich don't work hard for money. Their money works hard for them. Rich people use their brain and find ways so that their money works for them 24-7. From a rich person's perspective, every dollar or peso earned becomes a small employee and works hard to earn another one. On the contrary, the poor and middle class are guided by fear or desire. They fear of not being able to pay for their bills, so they work even harder. Or when they earn more money, their desire kicks in and they start spending it on liabilities such as nicer cars, bigger houses, etc. And because of these fears and desires, they don't want to invest their money and time into new opportunities. They are afraid that they will lose their money if they risk it. So they go and buy a bigger screen TV while they already have one. In comparison, a rich person invests his money no matter what. And even if he loses all the money, he is still ahead because at least he learned something. And this knowledge becomes a strong asset for his future investments. On the other side, the TV loses most of its value after a few months and you end up losing your money anyway. Plus, you lose the opportunity of learning something new. The third idea is about understanding the taxes, accounting, and law. According to Kiyosaki, earning a lot of money does not solve the problems. Learning how to keep that money after you earn it solves the problems. If a rich person earns $100,000, then he keeps all of it. 
But if a poor or middle class person makes $100,000, then he is heavily taxed and loses 30 to 40% of it. Kiyosaki explains that in the beginning, there were no taxes and the government created taxes to punish the rich and give it to the poor. The government used the Robin Hood mentality and people supported it. But the rich were smart and they found legal ways not to pay taxes. One of the big differences is that the poor and middle class earn money, pay taxes on that money, and live with what is left. The rich, on the other hand, earn money, spend everything they can, and pay taxes on whatever is left. The fourth idea, the rich invent money. The author says that each person is born with talent, but that talent is suppressed because of self-doubt and fear. He remarks that it's not necessarily the educated smart people who get ahead, but the bold and adventurous. People never get ahead financially, even if they have plenty of money, because they have opportunities that they fail to catch because of fear and doubt. Most of them just sit around waiting for an opportunity to happen. The author's idea is that people create luck. They should not wait around for it. He says it's the same with money. It must be created. The fifth idea, work to learn, don't work for money. Kiyosaki says his poor dad was intelligent, well-educated, and worked for money because job security meant everything to him. Rich dad became a millionaire by working to learn. The author recommends young people to seek work where they will learn more than they will earn, especially in the areas of sales, communication, marketing, accounting, leading people, etc. During an interview with a journalist, Robert Kiyosaki learned that the journalist strived to become a best-selling author. He realized she was a great writer and that she should pursue that. She told him that she had tried, but no one was interested. He accidentally offended her when he told her to take a sales course so she could promote herself. She became defensive. She replied, I have a master's degree in English literature. Why would I go to school to learn to be a salesperson? I am a professional. I went to school to be trained in a profession so that I would not have to be a salesperson. I hate salespeople. All they want is money. She packed her things. Robert Kiyosaki gently pointed out that he was the best-selling author, not the best writing author. This statement only infuriated her more and the interview ended. The world has many successful and talented people, doctors, lawyers, dentists, and still they struggle financially. But as a wise business consultant once said, they are one skill away from great wealth. If you took your skill set and paired it with financial intelligence, accounting, investing, marketing, or law, you could achieve great wealth. If that journalist had instead picked up a job at an ad agency to learn how to sell, she could go on to create great wealth with her writing. Rich Dad says, you want to know a little about a lot. In school and at work, you're expected to specialize. Those who earn promotions tend to be specialists. However, Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad always recommended the opposite. That's why throughout the years, Robert would work in different areas of his rich dad's company. He was expected to attend meetings with lawyers, bankers, accountants. It was essential to the rich dad for Robert to know every aspect of creating an empire. Idea number six, people who avoid failure also avoid success. Most people never win because they're afraid of losing or failing. If you look at the way humans are designed to learn, we learn by making mistakes. We learn to walk by falling down. If we never fell down, we would never walk. The same is true for learning to ride a bike. The same is true for getting rich. Failure is part of the process of success. Kiyosaki says, I look at my money game much like my tennis game. I play hard, make mistakes, correct, make more mistakes, correct, and get better. If I lose the game, I reach across the net, shake my opponent's hand, smile, and say, see you next Saturday. I personally know many people who have tried to create their own business, but have failed and eventually gave up after three or four failures. It always amazes me how these people expected to be successful after a few trials. Giving up after three to four failures is like starting to go to the gym to get in shape, but after a few days quitting because you didn't see any results. If you wanna get in shape, you need to be consistent. You need to change your exercise routine if it's not effective. You need to try a different diet. You need to try a different trainer until you find what works for you. Unfortunately, people do not apply the same mentality when it comes to getting financially fit. Idea number seven, don't focus on your income, focus on your assets. 
The long-term rich build their asset column first, and only then the income generated from the asset column buys their luxuries. The poor and middle class buy luxuries with their own sweat and blood. In other words, if a rich person wants to buy a luxury car, he doesn't buy it right away. He first buys assets, such as businesses or real estate, and if the assets generate good income, he uses it to buy the car. They always focus on the asset first. If you would like to learn more and improve your financial IQ, then I have two video recommendations for you. On the left side of your screen, you will see a summary of a book called Increasing Your Financial IQ, and on the right side, you will see a summary of a book called Cash Flow Quadrant. Both of them are written by Robert Kiyosaki. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more book summaries.